Okay, uh, let's do this. Okay. First off, we've got this cable. This cable is a perfect demonstration of what it is. You've got USB on one end and lightning on the other. It allows you to plug in uh, keyboards and mice and MIDI devices. So, for example... You want to do something like this? You know what you're going to need? Yeah. Something like this. And we've shown this in some videos where we you plug a, a trellis or like any this. microcontroller that has a MIDI output, USB MIDI. You can plug it into an iPad and it will show up as a MIDI device. And, like, there's no drivers or weird software. And then you can use it with tons of apps, some of which are free, some of which are not. Um, to uh, connect your MIDI USB device. Um, you can also use it for HID input, like keyboard and mouse input. Note, it won't let you do disk drive access, so like it's not like you can plug in a USB key and it'll show up as a drive, and you can't use it for USB uh, CDC. It's just basically like a camera connector, so it's only good for keyboard, mouse, and MIDI, and like some cameras, but it's not like it'll magically make it so you can use UART devices with iOS. Okay, next up. Okay. We got an upgrade, up, update, upcade for the PiCade. Up and update cade to the PiCade. <laughs> this is a great gift. I mean, this is amazing. Uh, it's an all-in-one kit. You build it yourself. No soldering required. Of the Pimoni PiCade, it's got these beautiful buttons. It's got a nice joystick. It's got this like gorgeous screen. Um, it's like the nicest Raspberry Pi powered retro arcade. It's got the on-off button on the side. Um, yeah, you can see the back, and the, it has a protector on the back, so you don't have to have it exposed. We just removed that so we could show you the photo. And I've, I've got it here. Um, they went all out. They went all out. And they changed the material. It's like a kind of a fiber material. It's got the new PiCade X hat. Uh, it's got this new RT2660H uh, um, driver board. It's got a uh, big, let's, uh, big let's speaker. Get, let's go to this area. Yeah, it's got a lot going on here. It's got an 8-inch uh, high-resolution screen. Um, it's got a, a control control panel thing here too so this is a um this is like an epic uh build here so this is they simplified it a lot it's easier than ever but it's also uh, quite powerful come you know comes with the latest raspberry pi 3b so it can emulate uh you know not like the latest 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 you know uh psp sorry the um like latest uh playstation 4 but like earlier games retro games uh nintendo games super nintendo games uh homebrews um and stuff like that you can absolutely play uh, on the PiCade. So this is a really uh, lovely build. And yeah, it's got this, um, like, uh, all laser cut or, or, or die cut um, pieces. You just snap them together, uh, snap them together, follow the instructions. It's a good weekend build, and you can make your own um, mini gaming board, gaming platform. Amazing. All right. So cool. This is mine now. Okay. Also with a gigantic... We have piece. large things this week on the We show. have some large things. <laughs> yeah. These on. are large things. Okay. So, um... You also got the latest Keno Computer Kit Complete. This is a big update. The previous one was like, you know, you got a Raspberry Pi in a case. Now it's kind of an all-in-one enclosure. Um, it comes with all the software. You know, you do put it together, but it's, again, a very plug-and-play. It's not too complicated. I think it comes with the microphone, speaker. It comes with the uh, keyboard with built-in touchpad. I believe the screen is a touch screen um, as well, but I don't know if I've configured it correctly. And then I can show it off maybe on the overhead. It's, it's not enormous, so I can, uh, yeah, thanks, I can just show this off. Um, so you've got um, all sorts of software you can run on it, um, such as uh, Scratch and Minecraft. You can make art, you can write code, and there's like an online uh, sharing system for um, sharing code as well. Um, and then I'll show you the backs. This is what you get to put together. Raspberry Pi, little power switch. Um, TFT controller, uh, USB hub. I think this is a microphone over here. Um, a battery pack. So it's, you can see it's, it's, it's plugged in right now, but it actually can run off a of battery power as well. It's got a built-in battery pack. Um, and then all the cabling required. And I think that's a, a Bluetooth uh, or Wi-Fi connector. It looks like it's a, maybe an earlier Pi 3. And then, um, yeah, so it comes also with a keyboard with a nice uh, touchpad. So it's like if you want to, you know, this is, it's a wireless keyboard. So maybe this is the wireless adapter. So it's, um, this is a, a, a great little um, DIY computer. It's all in one, it even comes with a screen now. It's a really like gorgeous screen. It's like a 10 inch, like, you know, at least 720p, maybe 1080p um, screen. And it comes with all the software. And 
and the whole point here is that you know you you have a community online it's not just like okay you build a computer and like good luck um it takes you through um online with a booklet like all the things you can do from beginners who just want to program in scratch to uh, play minecraft to people who actually want to program in python so yeah they've been coming out with some really nice stuff and this is this is really gorgeous and you can also like fit the keyboard in here i think it's like for, for portability there you go yeah. very nice so it's the new uh complete cano kit so a complete rebuild of the previous cano computer all right and the star of the show tonight besides our community new lady data is this this is one of the most exciting products i think we've released in a very very long time um for people who use a raspberry pi yes so we uh had this coming soon and we took some sign up we're making more and more but we have the cricket hats this is the fourth iteration of the cricket line which is a, basically a helper board that does all the robotics hard stuff for you so you can just stick to writing your python code to do whatever you want your robot to do um so this Cricut, unlike the previous ones, which were like Microbit or Circuit Playground Express or Feather Shaped, this one is um, Raspberry Pi hat shaped. So let's go to the overhead. I can yeah. show this demo. And if anyone who uses Raspberry Pi and tried to do robotics, it's always a challenge. And that's just the way it is because the Raspberry Pi is still somewhat new. And getting things to move and all the hardware and all the drivers, it's um, it's not easy. It's, it's Linuxy. Yeah. And so we think we fixed it. We think we have... Everything you need now to do robotics with a Raspberry Pi also works with CircuitPython. So yes. If you use CircuitPython anywhere, this will be very familiar. Or Python 3, same thing. The drivers are the same across the board. So the Cricut hat is just like a hat. It plugs in um, right on top, and it gives you all of the things that, um, uh, that a Raspberry Pi doesn't do well. So... Um, you know, I'll turn it off in a second, but you can see it's it's rotating a DC motor. This is a standard uh, brushless motor. It's got servo control. Um, and I'm going to turn it off just to so it's not making noise. Um, it's got um, okay, turn it upside down so it's readable. So it's got um, four servo connections. So you can connect four uh, hobby servos. You know, the the ones that take a, a pulse input, and it does all the timing for you on chip. So you get four servos eight analog inputs or like digital outputs. So if you need uh, analog inputs or, or PWMs or whatever, you can get them from this port. You get a three volt power, ground and a signal. There's a speaker connection. On other crickets, this is just connected to like the analog output of the Circuit Playground Express or something. On this, there's an I2S amplifier. So it actually takes the digital data and will give you like high quality audio output. Um, you can use small speakers or like enormous speakers, anything, four to eight ohms, pretty much any speaker you can think of. Plug it in, it'll give you uh, three watts of audio. There's a NeoPixel driver. Again, Raspberry Pis aren't good at driving NeoPixels. Um, you can kind of do it, but this the chip does it all for you. So you just send it you know, up to a thousand pixels worth of data and it will do the timing for you automatically. You don't have to worry about using a special pin or anything. Um, it's all over the Python commands. We've got um, the motor ports. This is what I've got this uh, standard DC motor connected to. So any five volt motor can connect up. You get two bi-directional motors, or you can use one bipolar stepper. And where so are the headers? Someone wanted to know. Oh, these. What are they? Yeah. Um, these are the signal I/O. So you can get eight pins, and each pin comes with a matching power and ground. So that's why there's like three in a row. Um, these come from the microcontroller, and again, you control them over Python. But you can, like analog inputs, you don't have on a Raspberry Pi. But if you have analog sensors that you want to connect to, you can plug them into here. So you can read like a potentiometer or like a, some distant sensors have analog input or output, you would use these, um, you just plug in headers into the, um, like wires with the headers. Oh, the Pi headers, they look like they can take stackers through them. You, you could stack through them. Right now it has like a, a basic non-stacking header, but yeah, you can stack on top if you'd like. They, they, they can go straight through. Um, and this is um, a four pin uh, drive output. So you get five volts and then four uh, they're called like Darlington outputs, so you can drive solenoids, unipolar, unipolar steppers, or some some basic um, you know high current device like high current LEDs or stuff. Um, this will do high current drive up to a half an amp per output um, with a, a, a Darlington transistor with uh, feedback um, diodes, a kickback diodes, so you don't have to worry about like your solenoid voltage coming in and damaging anything. Power comes in through here. So this is your five volt power. Um, you can also use this to power the Pi, although honestly I recommend having a separate power supply just because 
um, it's best to have like separated two power supplies, one for your logic and one for your motors, because you know the motors can draw quite a lot of current and then they can be a little noisy. But power comes in here and you can turn it on or off. Um, there's a little LED that tells you that the power is uh, good or bad. If you, um, if you, for example, uh, powered this separately and then you unplugged the, this power, um, you know, it turns off to let you know, like, hey, like, you know, that, that wasn't a good idea. Like, you don't have power on the um, Cricket hat anymore. And you can see it turns, turns red. Um, there's a reset button. There's USB, so this is interesting. This is for updating the firmware on this chip, but also it's a USB to serial converter. So you can use it to um, log into your Raspberry Pi. Like it, it, on the other crickets, it doesn't do that because there's no real reason to, but since we had two extra pins, we just added a USB to serial converter software to it. So you just plug this in and you can use it to like, you know, log in directly with um, any ser uh, serial terminal software. And then down here we have uh, four capacitive touch pads. So again, these are all handled by the Seesaw chip. So if you want to like touch something or have your robot, um, you know, have like a soil sensor or you want to have some sort of capacitive measurement, you get four alligator clip pads as well. Okay. And then we have slots here for like the camera and the display. So you can still use it with the camera and display just fine. So add like a robot with, um, you know, vision to it, or if you want to display output. Um, again, if you, you can program this all in Python and make a very advanced robot, and all the robotics are taken care of here while the, the logic is taken care of by the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and like Dave said, I was just about to say the same thing. I like the little um, serial interface so you can log into it. It's totally an um, extra. Okay. But it was free. Why not? So um, just a couple quick questions since this is such an interesting product. I think people, <sighs> There's yeah, so much. People, we'll answer questions during this because I think a lot of people who watch the new product video later will want to see this. Yeah. Um, so we answered the header question. Um, will it include the .h, .c, .cpp sources? It's actually all... In Python, the, right. the, the language that you use to program this is all, it's over I squared C and we have a Python library um, called Seesaw and Cricut. Uh, and you just install it with pip, pip install, and the instructions are, are like in the guide. And then um, the code that goes on here is the Seesaw code that's already on GitHub. Okay. And that is in C, C, uh, C and um, C++, but you can just grab that on GitHub if you wanted to modify it. Um, and then uh, people are answering the questions together, but uh, I'll just ask this. How many of the Raspberry Pi IOs are left after the Cricut hat takes what it needs? Um, the Cricut hat only uses two pins, I squared C. So there's only SDA and SCL, and you can share those. You, it, it only uses one I squared C address. The I2S amplifier, if you're going to be using that, uses three GPIO as well. But again, that's um, optional. You don't need to use it. Um, and then there's two more pins that you can barely see here. If you'd like to use, you can jumper IRQ pins, but you don't need to use them. Um, it, it does make it a little faster if you use an IRQ pin on the Cricut, because uh, you're not busy waiting on um, I squared C. But other than that, all the other pins are available. So I think you get like maybe like 20 more GPIO. Yeah. But only only I squared C is used. Everything else Bill's is. Bill's in the chat. He had a Pi to Feather converter. He doesn't need that anymore. Can yeah, he needs this. And then the other thing is, yeah, I think um, this is going to be a popular product, so sign up for it. I, I, we put in a batch. I think We're we, putting a batch. We're going to put in some more very already. soon. But yeah, sign People up. People have been waiting for this. Okay, um, and with that, that's the uh, that's the new product, lady. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. So much. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yes.